All right, we are back for a special episode of Beyond the Skills podcast. We have a special guest for you guys today. And you know I bring the heat with this podcast. We don't hold anything back. He is officially known as the International Cowboy. He's a just an awesome entrepreneur, awesome real estate guy, travels the world, is doing big, big things in his space. And we have the pleasure of bringing him today to the Beyond the Skills podcast. Mr. Justin Waller. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. We're drinking wine again, Chris. Last time we drank wine. (laughs) (laughs) We got pretty wild. We went through a couple bottles, man. A couple bottles, I think. Hopped on some four-wheelers, left them running, had to push them back back on the trailer the next morning. Burn my battery. Good times, man. (laughs) Good times. So, For you guys that don't know who Justin Waller is, you know, He's not hard to find. He's, he's, he's everywhere. If you pick up YouTube or Instagram, he's all over the place. The, the guy is moving and shaking, and, and I would say he's doing the younger mankind a huge, huge service right now by you know, just helping them become more, more manly, more entrepreneurial, just more what we need today in, in this political environment, this communistic-style environment where, where you know, left is right, right is left and shit's just backwards yeah man i mean they're trying to neuter our boys a lot of people think that's a good idea and i think it's a horrible idea because when young men become weak i actually think it hurts women probably just as much as it hurts anybody and i have daughters you know you have daughters and uh, i have a heart for young men i think we're in a time where the world's kind of stacked up against them they don't want to see them grow up and be masculine they don't want to see them be strong because that's threatening and that's not okay anymore but the truth of the matter is we're not just hurting young men, we're hurting young women as well. And the better you make young men, the better it is for society. The last thing you want is a bunch of angry young men at the world that feels like the world's against them, like they don't have a shot. I get a lot of fulfillment out of what I do for helping the young men. But I think as a counter benefit to that, it also helps the young women. I didn't think of it that way, but that makes a lot of no, sense. No, it's a thousand percent true, man. It's just like, I love all people. But I can't go out and give young women really advice on how to live their life. Who am I to tell them what to do? I'm a man. So all I can do is help build stronger men, just like you. Same thing you're doing. You teach them how to make money. You want to let them know that the world can be brutal. And here's what to expect. And here's how to get around that. And here's where you have to stand your ground. But as a result, it's going to help young women. I get messages all the time from women. You've helped my husband so much. You're helping our marriage. Well, man, that might be a grown man, but if a 15-year-old is watching us today, learning how to be a better man, in 10 years, he'll be a better husband. Yeah. And he'll be happy with his life. and He'll have control of his household. He'll have control of his emotions. He'll understand what it takes to be that strong masculine figure in the home. For that reason, he'll be a better father, a better boss, a better employee, just a better all-around citizen for society. If young men were stronger and they felt like they had more of a chance, you'd see less school shootings. You see less of these emotions that they want to see young men act like. So they're weak and they end up getting down on themselves and then they end up suppressing themselves in. And that's where you get the whole incel community. Yep. And so we just want to save those young men. It's like, and the only way to really love them is to just show them how. We're at this really weird place in history where you can go online and kind of touch a bunch of people like a father to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people every day or month through the platform is not much more fulfilling work or if there is God's work to do, I feel like it's helping young men right now. I love it, man. And there's such a vacuum right now of that, you know, you look around, we're going through a modern day Bolshevik revolution. If you don't know what that means, we're having a a communist overthrow right now. Let's be real. Putin is not telling his little boys, his Russian boys to cut their peckers off. No, no, Xi Jinping is not telling his Chinese boys to cut their peckers off. Nope. In fact, I'll tell you what Putin's doing. I had a deep conversation with Steven Seagal last time I was in Dubai. And Steven told me the first couple hours of school, those boys learned jab cross for like two years straight before they even throw a hook in PE. Jab cross. The kids are boxing in school as a part of their regiment. Russia's not fucking around. China's not fucking around. Nobody in bricks is messing around. You think those Brazilian kids aren't learning jiu-jitsu every day? And then meanwhile, they're allowing American young men to have TikToks and get their brain polluted and telling them that, you know, they might or might not be a boy. 
they're medicating all of our kids to be predisposed to being drug addicts. They started this about 30 years ago. They put me on Adderall. I think me and you had a conversation about oh, that yep. too. When I was seven years old, they told me I had too much energy and then I was ADD and ADHD. He put me on Ritalin and Adderall and it, it, it damn near about ruined my life when I was a younger kid. And I think we yep. had a conversation that yeah. happened to you too. Yeah, I got put on Ritalin at, I think, eight. That's the thing too is that curriculums are not really set up for little boys for sure i think it's really good for girls they can sit still they focus better men and women have different you know assets especially intellectually and uh, i don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to ask a boy and a girl to do the same thing at certain ages it sets the little boys up to fail they feel like they have learning disabilities and i mean you see it in the colleges man it's like colleges are overran by women now and by and largely that's nothing more than a result of a young man that went to school and thinks he has something wrong with him when in, in regards to learning which is complete horseshit men invent build and maintain society that doesn't take anything away from women they're also great in the workplace. I'm not opposed to women in the workplace. I just think there's a bit of a war on boys right now. There is a book called The War on Boys that goes deeply into this subject. And I think all we can do is help give back strong masculine values to young men, whether they're our sons or not, in hopes that our country can turn it around, man. Because I believe America's a goat. And, that, and that's not a very popular thing because everybody wants to hate America because of all the bad things that we do. And I see those things as well. But if you're my brother... And I see you doing something wrong. Am I going to just give up on you and walk away? Or am I going to stand up and try to help you and fix it? And the answer is absolutely. I'm going to stand up to you and help you and fix it. So why would I turn my back on my country when my country's messing up? All you can do is fight for something you love. Turning your back on it, man. For those people that turn their back on America, they can kindly just leave. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Let's see how it is somewhere else, man. Yeah, America's the last beacon of truth. That Most countries don't have a bill of rights or a constitution like we where we can... We have a Second Amendment, a First Amendment. We have to carry guns. We have free speech. This is intentional. They're intentionally trying to overthrow this country to get rid of the Bill of Rights, weaken men, like you said. Did you know that half the population is on psych drugs, Justin? Half the population. They can't deal with stress. I believe it. I read that article that half the population is on some type of psychotropic drug, either Adderall, Ritalin, antidepressants, Valium. They can't cope with life. Well, what did we do 100, 200 years ago? What did our ancestors do? They just dealt with it. That's right. But yeah, and, and that's another thing. It's like if you want to take over society, what's the first thing you attack? You attack the women and the children. And I would say by a large percentage of those people are the women and children. It's a lot of women on antidepressants. It's a lot of the young boys on psych drugs like Ritalin, Concerta, Adderall. And that's how you can really get in and rot a country from the inside out. You don't have to fight a war with guns if you can make them dispose from the inside out. And it's just a sad fact of how things are going. And so it's funny. Sometimes when I say stuff online and it goes viral, I'm like, I really just said that because I was born in the 80s and we didn't have a choice but to fucking cowboy up. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like there wasn't this this choice of crying and it was going to be OK. It was like, son, you better shut the hell up and get it done or, you know, yeah, we'll my, pick the next kid. My mama beat me with a workout belt when I was bad. Oh, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I know all about shit. that. Yeah. We rode in the back of, you know. In back of pickup trucks going 70 miles an hour heading to the camp. I'm talking about the back of the pickup truck, not the back seat. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the tailgate area. Yeah, you get, a ch you get arrested you for can. child abuse doing that now. Yeah, every, everything, <laughs> it's crazy. everything is crazy. Everything is changed to make it soft and not struggle, where I feel like you build strength through the struggle. It's where every better character is going to come from, you know, and people don't want to hear it anymore, especially when, when there's a lot of things out there that, that says that you can do it in an easier way. That's why we're so adamant about it, staying in shape, staying off of drugs, understanding, accepting that it's going to be hard. Life as a man is hard, as it should be, yeah. and it's constant competition. And to tell somebody that it's anything but that is misleading them. So when they go out into the world and they have this expectation that it's going to be easy and it's not, they feel like someone lied to them. And so that's why I think it's so important, an absolute must, that we have to scream from the rooftops, your life as a man is going to be difficult. And because it's difficult, it's going to be fulfilling and it's going to be rewarding because there's going to be a day where there's going to be a woman and some children that need you to be strong. And all the fulfillment that you're going to get from your life, of course, will be personal, but also in giving back to that family, being the leader of the household, being the leader of your unit, wherever you work. And having people look to you in hard times. And that's what a leader really is. It's like when everybody else is freaking out, you have to be the calm of that storm. Yeah. And it's going to take a lot of mental and physical strength to be able to do that. 
And somebody needs to give that message to young men so they at least have a shot. Change their relationship with it in a way that allows them to accept that pain and wear it as a badge of honor. Whereas what's been going on is more of this isn't fair, it hurts, it's hard. You know, I thought I was supposed to get a trophy. And that's just simply not true. Yeah. It's simply not true. No, well, well, let's talk about that because you talked about leadership. You talked about trophies. And it seems as though they don't want any more leaders. They don't want any strong, masculine men anymore. And I think there's a reason behind that because if you don't have any strong, masculine men, everybody becomes weak. Because if you have one, like if, if you get rid of all the competition, that actually degrades the rest of society because nobody has anybody to look up to. And nobody can follow that leader leaders pull up the rest of the people behind them it's, it's natural selection it's nature and they're trying to go against the natural laws of nature by by making these men weak or, or dumbed down through drugs and pornography and just all this crazy shit you see it's a basically a it's a cultural degradation of society is what we, we're seeing in the western countries yes only in the western countries that's the weird thing very particularly the western yeah. countries so, look, I'll put. I'll tell you right now, you couldn't go to Dubai and type up a porn site. It wouldn't come up. You could try to. It would not come up. And that'll tell you a lot about a country and how their morals and values are. They don't put up with it. You could. I could leave this watch. You could leave your watch at a table all day in Dubai. Nobody's going to steal the watch because they don't want the smoke. And when you have countries that have legitimate law and order, legitimate morals and le legitimate things that they're going to stand behind and stand up for. It's hard not to respect those places. Dubai being one of them. And I got to tell you, I'm not a huge China fan. I'm not a huge Russia fan, but I do respect them because at least they lay the law down and they stand behind it. You know, I'm not Islamic. I'm not Muslim. I respect their religion. Yep. They stick to what they say. You know, they don't, they don't halfway do it. They do it all the way. This is how it's going to be boom, 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 done. And if not, haram, you're out, you know, and it's hard not to respect it. Yeah. And when I look at my country, a country I love very much, we have to get back to where we need to find out what our morals and values are, and we just have to stick to them. The law is the law. There's too many people going around. Like, it. if there was more of a – sentence or a repercussion to shoplifting and killing and violence in the streets, you would see substantially less of it. If you go on Twitter right now, you're going to see robbing and looting. I mean, like if you look during COVID, all the robbing and looting and the crazy things that were going on, if there was an actually a repercussion for that, you wouldn't see it happen. You don't see this happen in countries that are not Western countries. This doesn't go on in Dubai. This Hell no. Go on in Eastern Europe. Oh, bro, you ended up in the desert and you do that shit in Dubai. And as you should. You know, the people going around hitting old ladies, stealing their purses and shit like that. You do that. They catch you on a CCTV in Dubai. Nah, man, you know, you won't see the light of day again. And that's how it should be. And it, it would it would shut all this shit down that happens here. So although they're supposed to be our enemies, Russia and China and you know, all these other countries, it's hard not to respect them because at least they lay the law down. They're playing to win for real. And they're letting us rot from the inside out. And all I want to do is stand up and say, hey, guys, listen, I know that it's not good, but you need to check the scoreboard. America's still the best country. It's not unsavable. And so you fight for it until you can't fight anymore. I love That's it. the only way I see it. You've been around the country. You've seen a lot of different things, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different personalities. You, you, you got to you got to hang out with Andrew Tate and his brother. Uh, you know, you, you've got to see a lot of different aspects of of Eastern Europe. I think that's where they're from, Eastern Europe, right? Romania. Yeah, they're over in Romania. Yeah. When, when you go over there, and, and you get to hang out with the people, are there little boys over there dressing up and acting like little girls? Over there? No. You know, you know what's inter really interesting about Bucharest itself. One thing we like to do when we're all together, we'll drive to kind of like the little downtown area of Bucharest by the um, the big capital. And it literally feels like a time machine, like you went back to the 80s. You see families, they do this whole water and light show where they'll play like Michael Jackson songs. Like literally, it feels like the 80s. It is one of the most wholesome things you'll see on the planet. And there, no, there's no cross dressing or anything like that going on. And let me be drag very queen story. No time drag school. queen, none of that. It's a very Christian country. Yeah. I want to say it's like 98% Christian. I'm going to be the first to say, look, if a guy wants to wear a dress, 
who the fuck am I to tell him? Like, I don't care. I really don't. If if a guy is like gay or, bi or whatever, I really yeah, truly I, do not care. I don't care either. I, really, I truly yeah, don't I care. Agree. In fact, I'd employ the guy if he's good at his job and and like we have a good relationship and it's all up and up and there's no nonsense going on. I genuinely don't care. It's just something that you don't see in those countries. Well, the real question is why is it being promoted so heavily to our children? That, that's really. The and I think that's the problem. I and, and we're at this place where it's like that has been long time accepted. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we're, we're yeah, like that. homosexuality or yeah. even transgender. It's like been a long time accepted. Nobody even would dare be rude to somebody over that at this point. Yep. Where the problem is, is when you try to put it in front of my children. That's a very adult subject. That's an yep. adult decision. And I don't mind that you do it, but don't push it on my kids. Yep. And, I, and I think that's one of the things that I have an issue with as far as public schools go and why I won't put my kids in public school. I'm going to privately educate all my children. It's not because I have anything against any of these subjects. It's that I don't know how it's being pushed in their face and to what degree. And I just want to make sure that I can control the narrative of what people put in my children's minds. Yeah. You know, and, and what I would say instead of promoting it is love everybody. Yeah. You know, if they feel that way, that's fine. I just want to make sure my kids are feeling and acting the way they actually would naturally feel if not given influence. Yeah. And that's it. And I, I want to be in charge of influencing my children. And that's going to be a very love based influence. Yeah. You love people of all races, religions, sexual preferences, all of those things. Well, uh, you and, know, yeah. And, and I think overall, like you see all this stuff on, you know, CNN and uh, the Communist News Network. They're pushing this agenda that, you know, like that it's all kind of racism and all this and that. I think overall. Most humans love other humans. I've never met another person from another race or religion or anything and been ugly to them because of the way they look or what they believe in. Never. Never. If never. they are good people, I, I, I actually am more interested in them than I am really my own race when, when like, we meet somebody because it's a different culture. I think they're pushing this narrative. Like, to, they call it with divide and conquer, right? Yeah. It's, it's just really weird times to live in. I just don't, I don't see it. I, I haven't seen it even every day. Like I don't see what they're talking about with all this racism and all that. I, I don't see it. I, yeah. I, a, th a thousand percent, man. You see it get amplified on social media, which creates hate. You know, you, you'll see white on black or black on white crime. You know, dude, if I see a black person at the store and they're close to the door, I'm opening the door for them. Yep. And it's nothing 100%. for a black person to open the door for me. Yep. You know, hey, how are you doing? Like, there is, I don't feel this tension. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, there was a time during COVID where I felt like, dude, straight white male, I'm pretty hated right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but but by and largely, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. They, they, and, and I think it feeds itself. Yeah. Most so, human beings love other human beings. And isn't that natural? Dude, it's I'm natural. telling you right now. It's the natural law. With everything that's going on in the world right now, I, mean, I don't want to talk on this deeply, but what I see in Palestine breaks my heart. Yeah. And I, and regardless of who's on what side and, and why America would help Israel, which I think is pretty clear why America would do that, um, which doesn't make it right, by the way. I genuinely believe in a few hundred years, they're going to be like, those fucking idiots we're killing each other, humans killing humans, instead of figuring out how we can help Elon figure out why we're flying yeah. through space on a rock. Dude, yeah. no, ser like religion aside, yeah. everything aside, how you feel about the subject, humans are still killing humans. I, I just feel like in 2023, we should be further than that. Well, let's go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. Let's talk about this guy named Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah, I've heard of him. You know, they're pushing this... One world order, new world order agenda, depopulation. If you read what they they've been writing about for since the seventies, really, that the world's overpopulated, and we got to get all the different countries to to and races to fight one another so we can bring in order through disorder, right? And if you understand what's going on with the global elites, you know you can kind of you can read between the lines if you have enough awareness and and and, and you're intelligent enough to realize that. We're all being played against one another. Thousand percent. And you know, it's funny too, is because if you were to go back and look at news from the nineties or the eighties or the early two thousands, it's been the end of the world. It, 
Yeah. For a very long time. And I do agree with you on the global elites. Like, you know, you look at the people that, you know, own BlackRock, mm-hmm. State Street, Vanguard. Yep. They just took out like $2.7 billion to buy more real estate. A lot of these people that own commercial properties are coming up on their on their arms yep. and they're going to buy them out at nothing, get all their equity. And also the same people that are part of the you're going to own nothing and be happy. Be happy, yep. That's and, the Klaus Schwab group. And, and, that's, and that's the whole game, man, is just that the power shift is, is becoming incredible. If we were to deglobalize, let's say America pulled its Navy ships and we deglobalized, America would do all right. We're one of the few countries that can completely self-sustain. Great borders, plenty of farmland. The Mississippi River is the most powerful river in the world, man. I'm a huge fan. We have it all. But for some reason, our leaders are allowing us to get attacked from the inside out. And that just makes me feel like there's a bigger play there in regards to what they're allowing to happen when it comes to apps like TikTok. When it comes to what's happening in these wars that we're funding, which, by the way, is just another taxation on American people. Every time we go and get involved in war, where there's proxy and we're shipping weapons out or we're supporting in some way or sending billions of dollars to another country, it's just a tax on the American people. And so for that reason, it, I have to question It's like when you think about who is they, everybody talks about who they is. Every day that goes by, I think that becomes more and more apparent and more obvious. And uh, what's scary is. Even if we know, I think that you have to question this. Okay, well, what the hell can we do? Well, here's the cool part. Never in in my 43 years of being on this planet have I seen so much awakening and awareness since COVID. Because most of the general public is pretty unaware. I've been talking about this shit to my wife for 20 years. You know, I've been I've been studying this shit, and my, my wife thought it was crazy. But 2020 happened. It kind of took the curtain off of what's going on, and a lot of people woke up and realized that, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. And, and a lot of this so-called conspiracies. Oh, no, they're not com- conspiracies at all. They're not. And we're getting to see it in real time. You see people like Alex Jones get canceled yep. and he gets to come back. Yep. There's just spaces the other day. I think it was Andrew, uh, Alex Jones and Elon were on a call. And I'm going to tell you, there's been a couple of times where I've been very, very proud of my, my country. When Trump won the election in 16, I was very, very proud of my country. I felt like we had made the right decision. Another thing that happened recently that I was very proud of, this might not be American, but I was just proud of in general, is when Elon took X. I was like, well, if there's a silver bullet for true free speech, Elon Musk really did something very special when he took over X. And in a lot of ways, you can look at that as one step towards saving humanity and then bringing Alice Jones back is just as big of a step so we can really get the truth out to the world about what this global elite thing really means and what it really looks like. And I think Alex is at the forefront of yeah. of really pushing the dial and letting people know what's going on. And, and just so I'm transparent with you guys, I've been listening to Alex Jones since 2012. Yeah, he's crazy, bro. I've been, I've, I've been smoking cigars with Andrew, and Alex will call on the phone. He's like, what's up, Andrew? You won't believe this shit. <laughs> and Andrew's just laughing. Smoke. He's wild, man. But I've never spoke to him directly, but I've definitely heard him on the phone a time or yeah. two. I mean, he's, he's got, you know, like, I think he has a, an element of having to be an inter, inter, entertainer because of his yeah. audience. But the dude hasn't missed, and he don't miss too many times. Yeah, he, he's kind of outlandish in some cases and does a lot of things that yeah. are controversial. But a lot of his stuff ends up, it's come true. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm going to tell you, outside of Alex Jones, you look at somebody like Tucker. Never in a million years did I think Tucker Carlson wouldn't be on Fox News. I smoked cigars and had dinner with him. We must have been together six hours after he did the interview with the boys. And you talk about a down-to-earth dude. And then just to be on the fly on the wall for that conversation, yeah, you know, and just be like, wow, you know, it, it really is what people say it is. It's, it's a little bit darker than I think the average person really wants to accept. And I think the average person doesn't want to look. You, you just said something that is very pertinent to this conversation. You said the average person just doesn't want to look. And I think what has happened is that it's so scary to most people to think that their country is that messed up and that there's that many evil. I think most people want to look at the best qualities in people and think that they have the best intentions. And I think things have gotten so wild and crazy that 
you wouldn't think that there's actually that many evil, crazy people trying to do all these crazy things that you can't even look at it. There's an old French philosopher, it was by Voltaire, famous French philosopher, said, if you want to know who your master is, figure out who you can't criticize. The people that are being censored all over the, the world are the ones telling the truth, right? So it, it's the strangest thing that we, where everything has become backwards. It just, there's a funny feeling in the air. I don't know if you've gotten this funny feeling. The past, since COVID, I've gotten this weird, strange feeling that like something ain't right and something's, something's going to happen. The entire world to me has changed. When COVID started, Co the beginning or pre-COVID feels like 10 years ago to me. So many things happened back to back to back to back to back that it doesn't even feel like the same place. And it, they're even talking about another virus coming out right now. And dude, it, it's... How would they know that? Because they're the ones planning it. <laughs> and you remember we were talking about this in the truck when we were That's going right. to look at that farmland. You said to me, you said, well, nobody's going to buy it. And my response is that they don't have to buy it. Because inflation is so high and people are hurting so badly, they can't afford to lose their jobs. Yeah. So they just have to comply. And that, in my opinion, is actually more scary than anything. Because now we're to a place where people actually know what's up. They just simply aren't going to be able to do anything about it. It's only going to be like 1% people that make a certain amount of income that can actually stand up and say, fuck you and fly private or do whatever they want. But for the rest of us, or for the rest of them, it's going to be ugly yeah. and, it, and, it, and it continues to get worse. And I don't think we're at a place now where the normal person actually believes. I think during COVID, there was a lot of people that did actually believe it. If it happens again, I don't think that's going to be what's going on. I think what's going to be going on this time is like inflation's high. I'm already having trouble paying my bills. My groceries are already 30% more. They're adjusting the CPI. To make it look like inflation is not 16 fucking percent when we all know it is. They're saying, it, they're saying it's eight or nine bullshit. They're barely making it. And they can't afford not to comply. Yep. And, and that's when social unrest starts to happen. I think the thing yep. that's going to happen is going to be a, a major social unrest and like kind of an event in that regard. I totally agree with you. And I'm glad you said it first. I think they are intentionally through a slow boil. If, if you can kick off some kind of civil disobedience, you can do what's called martial law. And you can suspend the Constitution. You can suspend your Bill of Rights. And if you have a real, real, say, uh, conflict, you can suspend the government for a little while. And you, get, and, and you, can, you can pretty much reset the government if you have a big enough ordeal. I'm just going to come out and say it. If you can kick off another civil war. No. I'm just gonna, I'm beating around the bush because I'm trying to I'm trying to dance around my words, but I'm just going to come out and say it. They need a civil war, guys. They need to kick off a conflict so they can get rid of your bill of rights, so they can get rid of your constitutional rights. That's why you see all this craziness. Yep, and there go the guns. Yep. And I'm gonna tell you, that's probably the last straw for me. Yep. Guns go. I'm gone. Yep. Because then you can't protect yourself. You know, and, and it's already bad enough when the cops can't even do their job. Yeah. You know, yeah, you got a couple bad apples out there that are cops. But for the most sure. part, you need cops in society. 100%. You know, and, and and when a cop has to worry about losing, a good, honest cop has to worry about losing his job or possibly going to jail, then it's already going yeah, in the wrong you got direction. A problem. It's already going in the wrong direction. So we've had civil wars all over the world. We just had a civil war in, 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 eight, in 1862. That wasn't that long ago, right? We had another civil war before that, which was the Revolutionary War. People think that was a Revolutionary War. No, that was another. That was a, their first mm -hmm. civil war. And the thing is, and I'm not promoting this, by the way. I'm not promoting a civil war. For, you know, I, I'm just saying this is what I see. I've studied a lot of history. I've studied the, the, the rise and fall of empires. Yeah. And we're in the cycle. If you guys haven't read The Fourth Turning, Right, we're in that season, a cycle where a country's about to turn, meaning mm -hmm. shit's about to collapse and start over. And we've had it so good for so long that people are going to be so blindsided because they think this show of printing money, living this absorbent, you know, over the top lifestyle on credit card debt, you know, 
all this social wear, welfare, where you know all all this, this the freebies they're giving out is just going to keep going on and on and on. This can't last forever. We have what are we at thirty three trillion dollars in debt right now? I believe yeah. we're getting to the point where our interest is going to be more than our military than, budget. Yep. And then they say it's thirty three. It's not thirty three tri- trillion. It's more like two hundred and thirty trillion because you got Social Security, Medicaid, all these unfunded. It ain't gonna make it. It ain't. It's not gonna make it, bro. Like I don't. Like, that's why I say this, make though, it. Justin. Because that's why I'm, I'm. I'm not trying to be outlandish, but we can't. We can't keep doing this. Like no. it's, it's not. A, you can't keep affording all this. Look at the pension plans. Pension plans are busted all over. They're printing money just to pay pension plans. That's scary when you start thinking about all this. And it boils down to what we talked about in the beginning. You started talking. We talked about the young men in this because the young men are going to be the ones that inherit this country. The whole bag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's in a lot of ways, it, it looks like they're setting up for socialism. Yeah, and if they do, then we will fall. Yes, and I don't, I don't want to believe it's true. I don't think any particular country can take over the the currency, but I think BRICS has a good shot at it collectively. Yeah. You know, but here's the thing: I want, I, I want to kind of make a curve on this conversation because I don't want to be all doom and gloom for you guys because there is a, <laughs> cause there is a, ca- a caveat to this. There's going to be a huge opportunity, right? I'm kind of a natural doom and gloom. It's like I, have, I like to be paranoid because I, I feel like I can kind of, I can be, I can see things that most people can't see if I'm paranoid and I'm thinking about all the negative things that can happen because I've already been there in my mind. If they happen, it's not really painful because I've been there in my mind. But here's what I'm going to do if I'm 20 years old, I'm 18, I'm 19 years old. There's a huge opportunity right now, and and I want to talk about this because me and you both come from this, and that is the trades, the service trades. Have you tried calling a landscaper lately? Have you tried calling an HVAC company? Everybody's backed up because nobody wants to work. All these tradesmen are dying off. I come from a – I mean, I started an all-change business out of the back of my truck when I was 22 years old, scaled it to the largest mechanic shop. And with four locations in three years at 25 years old, I know you, you scaled a, you know, a metal business at a young age. Yeah. So we're not talking out of our ass here, but there's an opportunity in the trades. There is. And, and, you know, I do think that in five, 10 years, there's going to be YouTubers out there saying, you want to know the new hack, learn how to become a plumber, an electrician. And, and the truth of the matter is, is like, it's going to get down to like the primal needs of humans. Yes. And right now, that work has been put on a lower shelf for such a long time. And things like Amazon drop shipping or Facebook ads and all these things have been, you know, where you can make a bunch of money. I do think that paradigm is going to shift. I think it's going to shift hard. And I think men that are willing to get out and work with their hands are going to do very, very well in the next, say, five to ten years. Yeah. And it's just going to be out of, out of pure necessity. There's not going to be enough guys that know how to do it. Yeah. And we deal with it. I do. I still have 200 men and we're dealing with it all the time. It's like, I have multiple, multiple men that make six figures. That's unheard of in construction trades, maybe in the past, but now it's just absolutely a necessity. You want to get that building up or you want to run electrical to it or get plumbing to it. You're going to have to have somebody that knows how to do it. These are the things that make the world go around. And so I know you're dead on. It is going to, it is going to turn. I think it's going to turn in their favor and good. Good. I'm glad it is because there's too many things out there that aren't as important to the world, aren't as important to everyday life, that get paid astronomically more than its actual value. Justin, I got buddies that were Val Victorians in their class that make a fraction of what I make. Val Victorians went to college. I know people that have been to college that, that make sixty grand a year. Smart people. You know, we're straight A students in school. We've done our kids a disservice. College. They sent all these kids to college for the past 30 years. And really, the, if you understand why they pushed all the college, it was a big bank thing, right? The banks oh yeah, the banks made all the money to college. That's why you got $1.7 trillion of student debt right now that can't be paid off. Oh, yeah, right there with the American dream. Yep. But the banks got the American dream because not everybody's meant to go to college. Back 40, back, say 60, 70, 80, 100 years ago, every, the men got out of school. and went, or While they were in high school, they, went to tr- they were in trade school. They were auto mechanics. Yep. Plumbing, HVAC. I think if you're a young man watching this, you know, if I'm a young man, I'm 19. Dude, I'm, dude I know plumbers that make six hundred thousand dollars a year. Justin. Yeah. Yeah, it's one percent money. Yeah. Another thing they would do back then is they teach some boys how to work in a factory, but then we started outsourcing everything. 
and shut our own stuff down, I think that we should start opening our stuff back up. Yeah. And then we wouldn't be buying things from other countries. And we could choke a lot of these other countries out, China being the main one I'm thinking about. Just by just by using the natural resources, like take the oil out of America instead of buying it from other places. There's so much that we could do in America to stimulate jobs, reduce unemployment, pay our people the right amount of money, reduce the inflation. I was watching the debate the other day and they were talking about this and I'm like, Yeah, obviously. You know, we like they're saying these things like is it like it's rocket science. Yeah, of course. Why don't we open our own factories back up? Why don't we start using our own natural resources and outsourcing everything to other people and give our boys jobs? And then, by the way, pay them good enough so they can raise a family and let their wife stay at home and raise their kids. That's one of the biggest things that I think is messed up with America is when we went off the gold standard. We broke the Bretton Woods Agreement and Nixon took us off the gold standard. We went from. One man needing to go to work that could support his entire family to needing two people because we started yes. flating. And what that does in a household is it creates this hard barrier of respect because the man and the woman are equally having to work as hard. The f- nuclear family, in my opinion, really got busted when the gold standard got busted. Yeah. Well, that's when they started having fake money. And I mean, we live on a sea of debt. You know, the, the dollar is nothing nothing it's an idea backed by confidence right and, and the thing is it's losing confidence around the world that's why you see the BRICS nations getting but, together but the point i'm making is this your wife stays at home does she not she doesn't have to work no. doesn't have to right when we're in the society where both man and the woman have to work to make the bills i think it breaks yeah. this line of respect in the household and maybe maybe you know people have an opinion about what i'm saying but i'm telling you when your woman has to work, she doesn't electively have to work just to keep the lights on. I think it messes something up in the family with the leadership of the man. Yeah. And and I don't even blame the man for that. It's just that we started this fractional banking bullshit. We didn't keep our promise. We went off the gold standard after World War II. And ever since then, I think the nuclear family has struggled more and more and more because it broke that dynamic of the the father that could go to work be proud work his ass off he was the hero of the house he came home he paid the bills the wife was in the feminine role he was in the masculine role yeah. everybody looked up to dad and, and it and it shattered it yeah that's a good point because it, it seems like the dad comes home now and he's a broken man he can't afford to he can't make a, a large enough income to take care of his wife his wife has to work his wife has to work and can't take care of the kids and now the wife has a problem with the the man because he feels like he's yeah. not providing and, and then she's on and then she's on instagram and facebook looking at all these lambos and all this stuff it's, it's impossible it's impossible for the normal guy yeah it breaks my heart man because it's like we created that america created yeah. that i'm sure we had our reasons building our military you know printing a bunch of money out getting getting all over you know i read something yesterday that said we had over 800 international military bases now i will say that At the end of the day, it does come down to violence. And one thing that America does have in its favor very much is that we can kick anybody's ass. (laughs) So regardless of how this whole thing goes with the currency, we do have the fact that we have the strongest military in our back pocket. And I think that we run a lot of things uh, financially. I mean, people are buying our bonds and other things like that. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. It's just disappointing that the normal average American man doesn't have the same shot that maybe his his father his grandfather had let's say justin waller 2024 is he's running for president and he wins what does a justin waller do to turn this country around and get it going in the right direction well i'd 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 stop printing money to give to other countries to fight wars first of all that would not happen i would not run (laughs) they wouldn't have me you would have to get a 10 panel hair follicle to get any kind of government aid Straight up, drug test, hair follicle, not piss test, hair follicle, any government aid. I would do my very best to take away the incentive to have children out of wedlock to get welfare. When they did that, they started to incentivize it. I would start to um, some of these family court laws with fathers. I'd, I'd want to help in that area. And uh, I would start our factories back up, and I'd quit buying shit from other people, and I'd choke them out. And I'd put those tariffs back in with Trump. And then I'd also reduce the taxes for the 1%. See, what they don't understand about taxing the shit out of the wealthy is all it does is make you want to downsize and get lean and stop 
hiring people. Yeah. It tricks I'd them. probably do a flat spending tax if I could. That way every drug dealer, prostitute, OnlyFans girl or Trump, whoever, would just pay the same amount of tax. And not just do it on spending. You know? And we could get out the deficit quick if we just keep our hands in, in our own country and, and watch out for ourselves. But we want to go police police the world so we can have our politicians get in backdoor deals. Mm. I would not allow any politician to have any stock in Lockheed Martin. How are you going to have stock in a company that fights wars? So it's in your best interest to have a war. Get the fuck out of here. You know, I'd make sure the farmers got paid the way they should get paid. There, I mean, there's plenty of things that you could do. And it's not even like it's rocket science. It's very common sense. What would you do? So first off, I would become an isolist. I, I, I would isolate myself, our country, and stop getting all, in all these foreign entanglements. Thomas Jefferson said when he wrote the Constitution, he warned everybody that we had to stay out of foreign entanglements. And I think that's, we've become the policemen of the world. We have. So We did it with our Navy. We did it, we did, yeah. Oh, that's one thing I'd stop too. China making all those fucking ships, I'd shut that shit down. That's yeah. the only, yeah. like, I, I see what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. So I, I would say, get out of in foreign entanglements. Stop sending these billions of dollars to all these countries in foreign right. aid. Stop supporting all the, I'd take, I'd, all the money we'd get, pull out of Ukraine, pull out of Israel, and we'd focus on America first. Look at our roads. Our roads are, are done. You go, to, you go to all these other countries, and their, their, their infrastructure is way better than ours. Well, first of all, they have a lot of trains and a lot of walkable cities. Yeah. That's one of the first things you notice when you go to Europe and, and a lot of these other places is they have legitimate public transportation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I, that's, the first, that's what I would do on a, on a global scale. On a micro scale, you got to heal the cell of the country, meaning the, the, the American, so that it spreads that you can heal the country. So I would start with the individuals, and I would make all the American public do personal development. What does that look I like? That. I would make them work out. I'd, you'd have to you have to lift weights. I'd get us off. I'd get us on the, a, a healthy diet, all natural. Get rid of all these GMOs. Get rid of all. There's a reason why cancer is up three hundred percent. There's a reason why our little boys, a third of our kids, they say in about twenty fifty, you're going to have autism. Right? There's something wrong. Change. We got to change the diet. We got to work on that personal development. We need to we need to promote the trades. Yeah. We, we got to stop having these underwater basket degrees, general studies, marketing. Like, these kids ain't doing nothing with these degrees. No, they just need them for the debt. They, they, yeah. They're getting these jobs. That, excuse me. They're getting these degrees, and they're, and they're going into a workplace where there's no jobs. There's nowhere to go for them. Yeah. And I would protect, and I have, I'm passionate about this, and I know you probably feel the same way. I would protect all these kids that are so-called ADD and ADHD. They label these kids as slow and they have learning disabilities it's not a learning disability it's a ability you understand i run circles around the average man i know you run circles around the average man were you labeled add i was do you know that i would say at least 80 percent of the masterminds i go to and speak at and listen to these other big time entrepreneurs guys worth way more money than me hundreds of millions billions i would say at least 80 percent of them they go up on that stage and say, I was labeled with ADD, dyslexia, or I was told I was slow. Yep. Something's terribly off about our, our, our system of, of teaching. And I do believe that, you know, entrepreneurs are a different breed of cat. And I know that not everybody is an entrepreneur. Only 3% of the population are entrepreneurs. But I think, I think guys like me and you and those high-performance guys are getting put on drugs intentionally. We're not made to sit in the classroom. Well, it's easy to suppress that way. Yeah. And, and, and it's a lot easier to suppress a man before he becomes a man. Ooh, that's good. Yes, that is real good. Y'all heard that, guys? Say, repeat that again, Justin. I, I said it's a lot easier to suppress a man before he becomes a man. And that's why they attack children and women. They're the most palatable. They're the easiest to manipulate. Let's say the Vikings come into a new territory. The first thing they do is kill all, kill all the young boys before they become fighting age males. The, f the easiest way to get to them is when they're 14 because they've not become a man yet, so now you can influence them. They're still boys. Justin, is that not what they're doing now? This is exactly what they're doing now. 
And and that's why people get canceled, man, by speaking the truth to them. And that's why guys like Tate get canceled. Yep. Look what they did to Socrates. Yep. He had, he had the hearts of young men. And they killed him. Tate is definitely a modern day Socrates. That's exactly, 100%, what, that's, 100%. Exactly, that's exactly what's going on. Elon is a hero for giving him a voice and for giving Alex Jones a voice. You know, Elon is like, like you said, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a hero, bro. Elon's a hero for sure. With guys like that and media outlets where people can really talk, I think Trump's got a shot again. And I think Trump is exactly the pill America needs. Yep. We need a wartime leader. We need somebody. We, America has the biggest stick. We need a son of a bitch in there that everybody knows he'll use a stick. And if we can get Trump in in 2024, I really think we have a shot to turn it around. I agree with you. I really do. If he doesn't win, I just I just don't see a scenario where he doesn't though. Not if he not if we get a fair shake in a fair election. Yeah, we all we all know what's going on. I mean, yeah. If if the yeah. if the bozo gets elected again, we I don't think that's possible. I, I, don't I just think, don't yeah. see it. I mean, and the arrogance of them to even make him the nominee blows my mind. Yeah. The arrogance they have to make Joe Biden the Democratic nominee tells me they're gonna try to cook it. You mean to tell me. Yeah, you're fucking right. I mean to tell you that. That's exactly what I mean. You mean to tell me Joe <laughs> Biden got more black people to vote for him than Obama? There's no way. No fucking way. No way. <laughs> so, and that, and that's what worries me about hearing about this new sickness coming out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what this is. Yeah. I, yeah. I've heard this song before. But that will cause civil unrest. Yeah. And, 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 that, and that is exactly what you were talking about earlier, man. Yeah. And I don't mean to scare you guys and I don't mean to be, you yeah, know, we better go eat, eat gumbo before we get yeah, canceled, we, bro. Yeah, we, we're going <laughs> to, we keep talking, we're going to get in a lot of trouble, but this man is doing a lot of good works in the world. He's telling young people what they need to be told, right? And, and what, what they need to be told, but probably where their fathers are not telling them that anymore, right? I appreciate you coming on here, by the way, and, 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 and doing this. You know, if you guys that don't follow Justin, make sure you follow him uh, on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, all those stuff, and, and, and get get your sons to watch them. I mean, my, my all my boys have been watching your stuff, right? You know, you're telling, you just you're saying hard facts, right? Yeah, truths, right? Yeah. So I do believe that a way out of this is more entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are going to save America too, along with what what you're you know what you're yeah. an entrepreneur too, but what what you're doing with pushing all this masculinity and helping men become more men. If we have enough men, and that next generation turns. And they're hard enough, and we got enough, you know, blue collar guys, enough people that are really hard workers. Let's bring back everything that's that's traditional about America. We can turn this thing around. It's not too late. It's not too late. And what you Tate and his brother are doing, I, I think, is great because y'all like modern day John Wayne's, right? Yeah. Yeah. John Wayne was saying all this shit a hundred years ago. Right? Well, I say a <laughs> yeah. hundred years ago. It was, well, no, it's probably hundred. Well, Getting close. Yeah, eight, eighty years ago. Yeah. Right. So. But we'll wrap it up. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful that you came on. I know we talked about a lot for you guys that are on here. If you like this, please like, subscribe, give Justin a follow. Uh, you know, come out to the Allies Mastermind. You know, guys like Justin going to help you level up your game. And he's going to be talking about entrepreneurship, business, yep. real estate, uh, marketing, branding, and. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm very grateful, Justin, for you coming on. Yeah, I'm grateful for you, man. It means a lot to me. I'm glad I came out. Definitely worth the drive, my friend. Yeah, man. I will uh, do it again soon. Absolutely.